And a very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Seven's coverage of Grandstand this afternoon with racing all around Australia. Sandown Park here in Melbourne and also racing from Sydney at Rose Hill from Cheltenham in Adelaide and a big card up at Eagle Farm in Brisbane this afternoon. So we have a very big day of racing. Hope you can stay with us right throughout the afternoon until 5 o'clock. Well, our first event this afternoon has already been decided. It was an early start out there at Sandown Park for the nine race card and the opening race was the Toulombul Hurdle. The scratchings were Italian verdict and believable. We had a field of seven in the hurdle over 3,300 metres. So let's pick up the replay now of the first event and we pick them up just after the start. Going to the front is Cobbler Boy now as they go to the next. A length and a half to Brothers Home, a length for the back Powder Burn, two lengths for the back Star of Owls on the outside of Quartermaster, four lengths into Tackle Aban and two lengths to Argazan last of all. Here's the last of the trio down the back on their first round. Leader tried to pull up at it in front, Cobbler Boy, lost a bit of ground, he landed a length and a half in front. Brothers Home is second at the 800 metre mark, three quarters to Powder Burn, a length in Star of Owls fourth. Inside him is Quartermaster, four or five further back in the field then came Tackle Aban and about four or five behind it is Arkazan last of all. Coming around the top turn they've got eight hurdles to get over as they sweep up to the top of the uh, straight with about 2400 metres to go. There are three down the straight and the leader Cobbler Boy by two lengths. On the outside Brothers Home is second on the outside of Powder Burn. Brothers Home swung a little wide. Two lengths further back star of ours. Quartermaster the rail. A length and a half to tackle a ban and three or four last of all to Arkazan. Here's the first of the trio down the straight. The leader jumped it well coming down to the 300 metre mark and it's Cobbler Boy. Now on the outside Side second is Powder Burn. They're followed by Brothers Home out three deep around Star of Ours, Quartermaster the Rail. Three then to Tackle Aban as they go to the next, and about two behind it, Arkazan. Tackle Aban got into it. Coming now towards the uh, third one, this is the one just past the winning post with a lap to go, and they've got about 1,800 metres to run. Cobbler Boy about three quarters in front. He's letting the favourite stride up on the outside, Star of Ours, to get within the neck of the leader, and Brothers Home a half away, but out three deep. A length into Powder Burn. He's going to save ground. He went back to the rail, a length and a half, Quartermaster. Two then to Tackle Aban and two to Argazan last of all. To the side they swing, they've got 1650 metres to go, Cobbler Boy on a good rain, a length and a half in front of Star of Ours. Powder Burns the one who saved ground, a neck away third the fence, a half then to Brothers Home. They're followed on the inside by Quartermaster, a length and a half to Tackle Aban and one and a half to Argazan last of all. Five hurdles out, down the back they go, 1400 metres out and the leader Cobbler Boy by a length, Star of Ours looks to be travelling right on the outside, goes to the leader's girth now, a length then to Powder Burn, a length further back in the field. Came Quartermaster on the inside of Brothers Home as they go to that next. Star of ours on terms with Cobbler Boy now. Uh, Tackle a band second last and two to Arkazan last of all. Coming down towards this next one along the back with about 11.50 to go. Cobbler Boy, Star of ours jumping together. Star of ours out jump Cobbler Boy. He's giving it a crack with a whip now Cobbler Boy. A half length of Brothers Home sticking on and then Quartermaster Powder Burn. Four lengths covering those five runners and about four to Tackle a band and Arkazan. Over the one of the 9.50 Star of ours over it safely. Two lengths in front of Brothers Home. Battling on out three deep around Quartermaster. Cobbler Boy, the rider, throwing everything at it. A length into Powder Burn and four lengths further back. Tackle Aban and Arkazan last of all. They've got 650 metres to go. Two hurdles out. Star of ours about a neck in front. Quartermaster having a crack at him on the outside. Two lengths into Brothers Home starting to struggle and five lengths to Cobbler Boy and Powder Burn. Quartermaster put his head in front. He's crossed over and he's led the favourite around the turn. Quartermaster kicked away from Star of ours. Four lengths further back. Brothers Home. Down towards the second last and Quartermaster got right away. Over two lengths in front of Star of Ours. Five to Brothers Home and Powder Burn battling on. But it's Quartermaster the leader with a good break down towards the last hurdle. He's kicked away from Star of Ours. A long gap then to Powder Burn and Brothers Home. Quartermaster jumped the last well. Landed five in front. Oh, crashing of the last is Powder Burn and Quartermaster's coming away from Star of Ours. Argazan will probably get up and get third but it's Quartermaster by four or five lengths. Second Star of Ours. Six away third Argazan. Ahead of Cobbler so there it was, the first event at Sandown this afternoon, and the numbers were 7, 3 and 6. The winner, Quartermaster, second place in going to Star of Ours, and third, Arkazan. 7, 3 and 6, the numbers in the first event, with uh, S. Jennings, the winning rider aboard Quartermaster, in race one at Sandown. We're standing by for totes, but apparently there is some problem with a computer at the TAB, and uh, they are working on that problem at the moment, so hopefully that will be rectified very shortly. In the meantime, as we wait for the first event in Sydney, which comes up at 5 past 12, we check now the scratchings for the remainder of the day at Sandown Park. And uh, as I said in the first event, Italian verdict and believable were the scratchings numbers four and five. So let's check the remainder of the scratchings for Sandown today. And uh, in races two and three, there are no scratchings.
Race four is the Royce L Steeple, and number six, Balvary, comes out. Race five, take out two Cherry Hills, and at number seven, Auriga Star. The anniversary sprint, race six, is clear. Race seven, the withdrawal is number ten, Red Rattler. Race eight, take out one Sir Nivelle, the top weight out of the Donoghue Handicap. And the final event is the second division of the Donoghue Handicap, and the scratching is number ten, Ebullians. So there you have the scratchings for the remainder of the day out there at Sandown Park. A total of eight scratchings to report for the program. Now as far as the all-important track condition is concerned out at Sandown Park today, the track is officially good and the weather is fine. Track good, weather fine and the penetrometer reading is 5.05. Now what we can do is uh, possibly uh, take you to Sydney now. In fact, there are the pictures of the final stages. Flight schedule at the 200, the leader. Summer Vice is slowly overhauling it from Senwin. In front of flight schedule, it's about three quarters in front of Summer Vice, which can't do any better. And flight schedule's going to win the first. Flight schedule scores a length and a half Summer Vice. Three lengths away, third major reserve. They were followed by Senwin. Next time was Hollywood. A break in the field to Justice Walk, followed by Sindeal Thermion. Further back was Marin Gore, Mighty Sultan, followed in by need a break. Al Flynn knocked up from Builder Boy Shark, a lad, and it was last bar one, which I missed up there uh, in proceedings. It may well have been uh, Magic Charger. It was that beat about a half. Paul Ambrosoli, a commentator, and there are the final stages of the first in Sydney. Well worth having a look at those again because we didn't see too much of the first event and uh, our apologies, but it was out of our control. The winner, number three, flight schedule in the opening race in Sydney. Number three, flight schedule, the winner. Second place in going to number 16, Summer Vice. And third, number two, Major Reserve, 3-16-2. Placings as called by Paul Ambrosoli on the first in Sydney this afternoon. The second race comes with second star of ours paid 85 cents. There was no third tote for number six, Arkazan. Quinella paid $4.20 and as yet, the trifecta on the first has not been notified. Seven, three and six, 280, 140, 85, no third. Quinella, $4.20 and standing by for the trifecta dividend on race number one at Sandown. Well, we've just been advised that... Just about ready. Um... Telephone betting is back in business, we're told here, and they're ready to go and they're racing here in the second at Sandown. Royal Malcolm towards the outside jumped out quickly. One of the best away here is Prince Soretto and company with getting up on its inside, no remorse settling down, and further out Duke Abbey. Then Royal Malcolm followed behind them by Springfield Lad. Red Henry dropped out to the back of the field as they come onto the course proper with 1,300 metres to go. The leader is Prince Soretto, a half Duke Abbey. Exact is up there today running third. A half then to native quarter length, further back then no remorse from Royal Malcolm. Take Heart, Springfield Lad on the fence, then Native Neptune. Two lengths further back, reigning Supreme Game Patrol, and last of all, Red Henry. Running up with 1,050 to go, Prince Soretto being tackled quickly by Royal Malcolm. And Royal Malcolm has dashed to the front now at the turn of the 950 by two lengths to Duke Abbey. Over on the inside there is Prince Soretto, third around it, quickly goes, uh, taking off Native Court. Take Heart further out, a length and a half then to getting to the outside now. Springfield Lad followed on the outside of him by no remorse. Native Neptune there in the centre. Two to exact now dropping out. Then Game Patrol further back reigning supreme. Red Henry being ridden along with the 600 metre mark is last of all and he's giving Springfield that about five length start. The leader Royal Malcolm on the turn tackled by Duke Gabby further out native court. Take Hart is out four deep. Now pulled to the outside is Springfield Lad. Red Henry three lengths behind him making his run in the centre. At the 300 metre mark Take Hart took the lead. Springfield Lad coming out after him. Royal Malcolm back on the rail and here's Red Henry starting to finish quickly. It's on the outside Springfield Lad and Red Henry sweeping up to take heart from Native Neptune. Red Henry with the last run at them, sweeps to the front now from Maud. He kicks away from Springfield Lad and take heart. And in the run home, Red Henry's coming away to win by two and a half. Springfield Lad second, a head away third. Is take heart, then game patrol he ran on. Further back, Native Neptune from Royal Malcolm. A long gap exact, followed by reigning supreme. Then Native Court, further back, Duke Abbey. Second last is no remorse, and Prince Red the Grey is tailed off. Well, he's being ridden along at the 700 metre mark, but he got the last run at them. Hands and heels here from uh, Al Morn at Springfield, lad. Red Henry number two, sweeping away to win race two, the June Welter here at Sandown. He's come right away. Judge calling in the photo for the Miners. Springfield, lad, will get up and get second on the post, number one, ahead of Take Hart, uh, which is number nine. Two and a photo. One will get second, uh, Springfield, lad, and nine will get third. And that is take heart. Glenn's them waiting on Glenn's lover, the big chestnut. 
It's not fully set. Royal Off has been in for some little time now, and they're almost ready. Set for the Dorado Boy Hurdle. Giving them plenty of time to balance up. They're off this time, and a fair start. One of the best away, Glenn's Lover Arboreto, away nicely, and so is Regal Dan. Our house royal offer on the inside as they draw down towards the first hurdle near the 600 the first time. Sovereign's Crest behind them from Little Davin. Highland Ranger dropped to the tail of the field. They're over the first one, and the leader, Regal Dan, narrowly from Arboreto. Royal offer on the inside of our house court. Wide, three deep around them. The big chestnut is uh, Glenn's Lover. Little Dav pushes up behind them with Sovereign's Crest and threw a three away last of all to Highland Ranger. On the Turn into the straight. Regal Dan takes over now. Gets away two and a half in front of in second. Posse Arboreto. Third placing held by Glenn's Lover on the outside of our house as they go over the first of three in the straight the first time. Just in behind them but wide was Little Dav. Royal off of the rail and then Sovereign's Crest and three or four to Highland Ranger. Over the second of the treble in the straight and Regal Dan going along a little keener now. About three lengths in front of Arboreto under restraint as he clears the third one in the straight. And behind them came our house still wide as Glenn's Lover who hasn't been able to get into a position yet. Then Little Dav have around Royal Offer as they go out of the straight. He's still deep, Glenn's Lover. Sovereign's Crest back second last and five away last of all is Highland Ranger. They're going along at an even pace as they head towards the 1800 metre mark and going to the crossing there the leader, Regal Dan, is out about four lengths in front of Arboredo. One away on the outside was our house. Back on the inside Little Dav and then Glenn's Lover as they go to the 1800 metre hurdle. Royal Offer on the inside of Sovereign's Crest and four away last of all is Highland Ranger. He's getting a fair way back at the 1600 metre mark as they go over the hurdle there and the all standing and Regal Dan is two and a half in front of our house letting go around Arboredo. Glenn's Lover is now one deep on the outside of Arboredo. Then Little Dav. Then Sovereign's Crest a length and a half away covering Royal Offer and four or five away last of all to Highland Ranger. The first hurt along the far side and our house almost joined the other one. Regal Dan. They're only a length and a half in advance of Little Dav. Glenn's Lover's up three deep again. Back on the inside Arboredo. Then a length and a half Royal Offer didn't jump it well. Passed by Sovereign's Crest and two to Highland Ranger who's starting to work into the race. Along the far side at the next hurdle, our house and Regal Dan again, the joint leaders over it. They're a length in front of Little Dav who's travelled well. Speaking of travelling, Glenn's Lover's done plenty of extra travelling. He's been thried for three wide for most of the way. Royal Offer goes with him in Arboreto. Highland Ranger passes Sovereign Crest. Racing to the 800 metre point down the side now. And here the leaders are joint leaders. Regal Dan the inside from our house. Little Dav's camped on the pair of them. Two away then to Royal Offer running on. Arboreto struggling a bit. Highland Ranger to the outside. But he's still about six lengths off the lead. Glenn's Lover's done with and Sovereign's Crest last of all. They go to the hurdle down near the 600 metre mark and Regal Dan took over. Narrowly from second placing Little Dav who's coming after him. Two or three lengths further back to our house. One away to Royal Offer who'll run a place and seven lengths away to Highland Ranger. Not doing enough today the old timer. Then Arboredo and further back Sovereign's Crest and Glenn's Lover's done with. Regal Dan turned for home from Little Dav. The outside he's still not giving in Regal Dan. Royal Offer's angling for run up on the inside. Michael Lockett pushes him through. This is going to be really interesting over the second last one. Regal Dan over it from Royal Offer. And Little Dav there clear of our house, old Highland Ranger. Royal Offer pushes through on the inside of Regal Dan. He's finishing the better Royal Offer. Regal Dan got over to half length in front. Royal Offer grabbed him though. And Michael Lockett, a beautiful ride. He pushed him right up on the rail over the last half mile or so and he'll go home and score. Royal Offer by about a half, three quarters. Maybe a length on the line to Regal Dan who came again. Four away to Little Dav. He had every chance. Six lengths away then to our house. A length and a half away. Highland Ranger. A long break Arboredo. And well back behind them was uh, Glenn's lover who never got on the track hardly and last of all was Sovereign's Crest. Placings as called by Ron Paps in the first event in Adelaide 9, 8 and 4 the winner number 9 Royal Offer, second number 8 Regal Dan and third number 4 Little Dav, numbers uh, 9, 8 and 4 there not 8, 9 and 4, 9, 8 and 4 Royal Offer first, Regal Dan second and Little Dav third 9, 8 and 4 and there they are 9, 8 and 4, race 1 in in Adelaide. This is NZ Cup Day. Racing now. Rimland near the inside began quickly, showing speeds to Silver Scorpio and Bogart's Kingdom showing some dash. Tajara and Danjira handy with Grand Sander and Lord Foxy in the early part. Stealthy Knight is fairly wide as they race to the turn out of the straight. Vita Vore is out deep as well. Cruise in getting back. So is Dark Reflection and Vuora immediately drops out last. Bakura Boy up in midfield with Sir Silver Scorpio. 1,800 metres to go. Rimlad takes the lead. Leads by a length and a half. Danjira second. Lord Foxing cruising up to be third on the outside. One to ten. Jara. Followed down on the inside by Bogart's Kingdom. Then Grand Sander and Stealthy Knight. Four deep at the moment. 
One further back to Pakura Boy in the middle. So Silver Scorpio with him, Danaher on the inside, and Vita Vore out deep, Dark Reflection third last. Then Vuor and Cruz in at the rear, 1,400 metres out. Not a great deal of speed on. Rimland the leader, one in front. Lord Foxing second. One away third is Dangier on the inside, one to Tajara. Followed by Bogart's Kingdom, Stealthy Knight still out fairly wide, but probably doing no damage out there. In the middle is Grand Santa, then Danaher, Pakura Boy, Vita Vore, Silver Scorpio, Cruz in Vuora, and Dark Reflection now drops out last 12, 15 lengths from the leader. A thousand metres to go. Rimlad, he's been on top right from the jump. Rimlad leads by a half length. Lord Foxing second. Dan Jira is a length away third. Tajara a half length away fourth on the outside. And then Stealthy Knight moving up a little bit closer. Pakura Boy next. But I buy Bogart's Kingdom and then Grand Sander. One to Danaher cruise in. So Silver Scorpio's a long way back. Dark Reflection starting to pick up ground. Moving past Vita Vore. And Vuor is last of all. Heading down the side. 6.50 metres to go. Rimlad the leader. Lord Foxing under a fair bit of pressure. Second on the outside. Behind them on the rails is Dan Jira. And there's Dittman taking Tajara up three deep on the outside. And there's one down. There's two down. Two down as they went over the crossing there. Vuor are one of them. Cruise in might be the other one. They straighten up now. 400 metres out. Rimlad's the leader. Rimlad about to be joined by Stealthy Knight on the outside. Dan Jira's going for a run in the middle. Tajara struggling now. Pakura Boy coming into it. And so is Grand Sander on the outside. Then Sir Silver Scorpio. 200 metres out. Dan Jira and Stealthy Knight. With Stealthy Knight hitting the lead. But he's tackled immediately by Grand Sander. Grand Sander's loomed up on the outside. Race past Stealthy Knight. And Grand Sander's charging away on the run home. Grand Sander goes on and scores easily. Bogart's Kingdom will get second yes Bogart's kingdom second so silver scorpio third stealthy knight stopped at the end so did dan Jira. then dark reflection danaher followed in by rimlad pakura boy further back vita vore tajara walked home in the last hundred yards lord foxing stopped badly and he was the last one over the line here are the two rightless horses just coming past the pace now Right, numbers are 2, 11 and 14 as scored by Wayne. The winner, number 2, Grand Santa, coming right away to score by about three lengths in the run home. 11 second, Bogart's Kingdom. And third place in going to number 14, Sir Silver Scorpio. 2, 11 and 14 on the first event there in Brisbane. Now, the track in Brisbane was originally slow. As I said, that has been changed to heavy. And there's also been an alteration to the track in Sydney. Uh, it was originally slow and the track in Sydney now dead for these horses to come down. No, I missed the first part of it, Pete, but the second guy that fell, he seemed to be just on his own. They see the horse right at the tail of the field there now. Uh, yes, he, he becomes unseated there and he just goes off the side. He, he gives the impression he bailed out. Mm. Uh, possibly he uh, finished trying to avoid the other fallen horse. He's actually spun himself out of the saddle and when he found he couldn't get back on, he decided the best way out now. I, I was watching the finish of the race and I think one of those horses that fell could have been Vuora, ridden by Gary Willits, uh, one right. of Jeff Murphy's horses. So we'll we'll try and keep you up to date with uh, with any reports that come down through Sydney. Okay, through well, uh, thanks Roy. Yes, we will uh, keep an ear on that situation. Uh, for the running of race number two, they've just jumped, so they're coming into Paul Ambrosoli's view right now. One of the first to move, and as they come into view, Rick Toffin and Shining Hero of the leaders, Bold Star got away well. Bombay Express over on the inside of Killer Khan, Gally Gaskins working up three and four wide, Persian Port between them. Nate Comer has caught three wide and racing very fiercely in the early stages. Paul Antic is coming across from Galactic Warrior Garuna, and Jury Boxer dropped to the rear as they go to the 1600. Going to that top corner now, and Rick Toffin is the leader three Three quarters on Bold Star and two lengths away as Shining Hero. Now making ground up and around the outside, Galley Gaskins. Two off next to Paul Antic. Bombay Express on the inside. Nakoma settles down a half dozen from the speed. Between runners as Persian Port. Four lengths off next as Killer Khan. It's on the inside of Galactic Warrior. Jury Boxes next to last and Garuna's at the rear. Short of 1,200 left to run now. And Rick Toffin is just the leader. A neck on Bold Star. Two away to Galley Gaskins. Shining Hero on the inside as a half length further afield. Field. Two off to Paul Antic. Nakoma is still smothered away in the centre. They were followed the rails by Bombay Express. Paul Antic is dropping back a shade. Per Persian Port's gone up in the centre. A couple off to Killer Car. And they were followed wider by Galactic Warrior Jury Box and Garuna's at the rear. At the 800 now. And Bold Star and Rick Doffin have been cutting at each other all the way. Galley Gaskins is poised just behind them. A couple shining hero being asked to go. As is Nakoma. A length off Persian Port. Killer Car and Galactic Warrior followed by Bombay Express. 
giving ground. Further back was Garuna, a couple of jury box on the tail end of Paul Andick as they come to the bend. Bold star under the whip on the inside is tackled quickly by Galley Gaskins, which surged to the lead. Galley Gaskins has raced away. It's three on uh, in second place. Bold star shining hero. Persian Port and Nakoma were next plugging on. Killer Khan's getting into the clear, but Hardwig said go at the 200 on Galley Gaskins. It's a minute clear. Killer Khan holding second. Garuna's getting clear of the pack. It's going to run into a hole, but with 100 to run, it's all Galley Gaskins back to somewhat near his best, and Galley Gaskins wins in a breeze. Galley Gaskins by four lengths. Second is Killer Khan. Two and a half away, third Garuna Galactic Warrior Shining Hero, followed by Jury Box. The next one home was Persian Port with Nakoma, which failed to come on from Paul Antic. Further back, Bold Star, Bombay Express, Rick Coffin, and it was the last one to greet the judge. Placings in the second event in Sydney at 2, 3 and 1. Number 2, Galley Gaskins, which, as I said before, is uh, a duel accepted today. It was scratched out of race 7 on the card. And uh, they've showed pretty good judgment in starting it in race two, with Galley Gaskins winning easily, number two, defeating number three, Killer Khan, and one, Garuna, two, three, and one, as called by Paul Ambrosoli on the second event on the program. Rightio, now... Uh... Run here, they're off and running. They bounced out in a reasonable line, although Trenere and Rose of Tristram quickly dropped out to the back of the field there, back there with Corinda Can. Runny Rose will lead from Unicorn Planet, settling down. Tip the waiter out wide, went up third, two to Lady Marwell. On the outside of it, further back, Coolalua, Tango Melody, the fence, and time for drinks and pop artists racing a little deep. Two lengths, Princess Vanessa, followed by Bounty's Joy, out three deep as Swark. Then came Watchful Lady, back on the inside of Squander, who's got back from Corinda Can. Rose of Tristram, who's true. Special recipe, second last, Trader last of all. 8.50 out, the leader is Runny Rose, a length and a half now to tip the waiter. A half unicorn planet, third, a length into Cool Allure. On the outside of it, moving up as time for drinks and pop artist out four deep. Two lengths further back in the field, Swark, followed by under pressure there, Lady Marwell. Then Bounty's Joy and a gap in the field, then to squander about eight lengths from the lead and a gap in the field, Corinda Can, Tango Melody, watch for Lady Princess Vanessa. Runny Rose straightened up with a good break, 400 metres to go, about two or three lengths in front. Time for Drinks on the outside of Tip the Waiter, further back Kula Lua. Here's Pop Artist starting to run on fairly. A gap then in the field to Squander now getting out and coming home well. 2.50 out, Runny Rose, two lengths in front of Tip the Waiter. Squander and Lady Marvel. Pop Artist are trying to pick up the leader, which is getting weary. And Lady Marvel has swept up to grab Runny Rose. Further out, Squander and watch for Lady down the outside. But Lady Marvel races away. And Lady Marvel will win it about two lengths of the run home. Uh, second, maybe Runny Rose ahead of flashing up there in the centre. Tip the Waiter and further out squander with Watchful Lady from Special Recipe, then Pop Artist Tango Melody from Time for Drinks Cool Allure, Rose of Tristram followed by uh, further back Unicorn Planet, then on the outside Bounty's Joy, Who's True further back followed by Princess Vanessa, well back in the field then on the outside is Swark and one of the last in is Corinda Can and back in the pack was Trenere. Number one, Lady Marl being ridden along, uh, racing to the 800 metre mark, and she obviously didn't travel down the hill because she didn't want to be on her at that point. But she balanced up after Runny Rose led them a merry dance in front. She pegged it back pretty quickly. And this good little filly, six wins from eight runs now, Lady Marwell, but Lord Seymour gathered them in and has got the prize. The judge calling on the photo for the miners, and there's a swarm of them here. The second prize, um, Runny Rose stopping near the post. Yeah, they'll probably gather it in um, Runny Rose. Out wide we've got Watchful Lady. Closer to Runny Rose is um, Tip the Waiter and further out Squander. It's probably Tip the Waiter, Runny Rose and Watchful Lady. The uh, the principal three there ahead of Squander. Now he's called for a developed print there for the minor placings. For youngsters. Lights on. They'll race. They do. And away well Pearl Spirit out wide. Away fairly midnight tears out there. French loot. No early speed. Going quickly. Cell raise in that early division. And so too is uh, Miss Deborah who's showing good, showing good speed. And also I believe and on the inside star sign girl is going fast. It's on um, the outside rare spirit. One of the leaders with Miss Deborah from on the rise. I believe Margot missing on the inside star sign girl. Cell raise getting back. Aspiring wonder working into the race. Then further back in the field behind them day sin as they come to the turn then came midnight tears getting back out of ground french loot and also ruinous on the inside rows of plimpton they're getting right into the going then red russell followed out wide by more of the moment and a long last avalon's legend miss deborah kicked up went for home from rare spirit the outside but it's racing very greenly it's racing away from the rail and it's miss deborah clear at the 203 in front on the rise getting home late and then rare spirit out wide is all over the shop but miss deborah is plain sailing miss deborah doing it very easily in the
further going. Right up on the rail is about four or five in front of On the Rise, who'll get second clearly from Star Sign Girl. That's the way they finish with Aspiring Wonder, I believe, and then Rare Spirit, uh, Pearl Spirit, I should say. They were followed by More of the Moment and then French Loot. They were followed then by Day Sin, and over on the inside was Red Russell. Out wide on the track in that group two, Midnight Tears. They were followed back in behind horses there uh, by pulling up quickly was Rose of Plimpton, Margot Miss knocked up, Avalon's Legend, Ruinous was also well back in the field, and so was Selray's, beating about five or six in. 19, 1 and 13, as called by Ron Paps, the winner Miss Deborah having its second start in a race, ridden by Apprentice G. Benz, second place in going to On the Rise, Jimmy Courtney, and third number 13, Star Sign Girl, ridden by Marie Bolden. 19, 1 and 13, the placings on race two at Cheltenham. Racing this time, Liberty Bow began smartly. Baghdad Boy actually got the best of the start, bounced in front. Super Snack a shade slow to get going. Back about fourth last, and Blazing a Trail was a little bit slow to get going as well. As they settle down, 1,200 metres out, Baghdad Boy, the leader, Count Comma, ran ahead over Khan, moving up to be second and third. There goes Super Snack, showing plenty of speed on the outside, at about four deep. Western Fantasy is next, then blazing in on the inside, blazing a trail out very wide of the track, about five wide at the moment. Best of Irish is pushing through in the middle. Be somebody getting back with Liberty Bow. Sun Answers a long way back, and Stellite not handling the going as last of all. Coming down the side... Super Snack cruises to the front now. 800 metres to go. Super Snack by a length and a half. Head over Khan second. Baghdad Boy a neck away third on the inside. One to Count Comoran. One to Blazing a Trail. Starting to pick up ground on the outside of Best of Irish. Blazing in next on the inside of Western Fantasy. Three lengths to be somebody. Another three to Sun Ants. And then Stellite and Liberty Bow. Coming around the home turn and they're starting to spear wide these jockeys. Pam O'Neill leading them around the bend. She's nicely clear on Super Snack. 400 metres out. Super Snack. Two in front of Count Comoran. Coming to the outside. Then head over Khan and Baghdad Boy starting to struggle a little bit now. Blazing a trail is pulled to the extreme outside and Marshall starting to wind him up and then Best of Irish. 200 metres to go. Count Comoran loomed up on the outside of Super Snack. Count Comoran just in front of Super Snack. Blazing a trail is a length and a half away third. It's Count Comoran in front. Gouch is riding him hard. Blazing a trail is cutting him down close to the wire but the post is close enough and Count Comoran has been able to beat Blazing a trail. Super Snack third then Best of Irish followed by Head Over Khan then Stellite. The Next one in was B Somebody, Baghdad Boy stopped in the straight, Sun Ants blazing in, Western Fantasy a long way back, and Liberty Bow the last one home. 17, 12 and 3 of the numbers has called by Wayne Wilson. Darren Gouchy successful aboard Count Comerum, number 17, taking out the money in race number 2 on the card up at Eagle Farm this afternoon. Count Comerum trained by Jim Marconi down at Mornington, a stable mate of course to Rancho Ruler. Number 12, second, blazing a trail. Third, number three, super snack. 17, 12 and three, the numbers on race two at Eagle Farm. OK, that, thanks, Roy. They've just jumped in Sydney. Let's take you to Paul Ambrosoli. With Generation Gap, won the break over Ran Passer. All Stormy got away quickly and so did Isadora. She's going to settle down just behind the speed on settling. Two lengths away on the inside. Glow Matt from Pagan, Dan Shy, Smile and Shortery drop to the rear. Ran Passer at the thousand, showing all its customary dashes. The leader, more than a length on Generation Generation Gap and Isadora moves up to a close third. Whiffers sneaking up on the inside. A length back is all stormy. Shy Smile is three.